Welcome to High Gluttony. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Becca. And we're two ladies on an adventure. Listen along every 10 days or so as we cook a dish we like. Quest about cannabis education. Or chat with someone we respect. You can find more information about this episode at highgluttony.com. Thanks for joining us, Gluttoneers. Off we go. And we're off. (laughs) We are off and running. Let's get to it. (laughs) We're laughing because, of course, we are having problems hitting record. And Claudia's in the middle of it, as always, trying to get in our business. Here we are. Hello, Gluttoneers. How's it going, everybody? How are you, Gretchen? What's going on? Oh, I have two. I'm going to call them head injuries. One of them is more substantial than the other. I'll start with the minor injury. This involves my cat, Kenzie. When I am uh, relieving my sexual tension, so to speak, Kenzie gets quite concerned as I reach the end of things and the noises that emit from that. Uh (laughs) So she usually, if she's in the room, and for this very reason, I've started doing it in the middle of the afternoon when they're all out in the living room and I'll go in in the bedroom and shut the door so that I don't have to deal with this. Usually... As the noises start emitting, she'll come over just to make sure I'm fine. Okay. Like, and usually I can go, it's okay. Go away. Like, I'm fine. This is private time. Yeah. Please go away. (laughs) You're interrupting my flow. Well, the other day I didn't, I must've had my eyes closed or something because I didn't notice her until she was in my face. And this, (laughs) she, and the reason I try and assure her and shoo her away is because if I do not, She'll bite me on the face. (gasps) (laughs) Like to get your attention? I don't know. Like, it's like, are you okay? Like, I'm going to do something really shocking to make sure you're fine. So she bit down on my nose, full cat mouth over the entirety (gasps) of my nose. And she bit down hard. So like, I have a little puncture, like little puncture marks on either side of my nose where she bit me. And I was in the middle of the, the whole finale there. <gasps> oh my so, God. Which nothing kills your buzz faster than having a cat bite straight down on your nose. <laughs> oh my God. It's like <laughs> a little like vampire bite. Yeah. Like a yeah. weird little vampire bite. Oh my God, Kenzie. Oh my God. <laughs> and this was the same day that I got the first hen- injury. We'd gotten gots roadside milkshakes delivered in the middle of the afternoon at work and my boss had ordered something else that came with ranch so he was like does anybody like the ranch from Gots?" i was like i do i'll take it he gives me this little tiny container like just nothing i put it in my car was getting out of my car at home had too much stuff but i was like oh i gotta make sure i go back and get the ranch so that i don't leave it in the car and have it go bad open the door to the car and at the same time lean towards the car managed to smack myself straight in the head with the door while leaning towards it so I think that's why I ended up with such a bad injury there for like an ounce of ranch and so I managed to like completely scramble my brain like I stood there for the longest time because like it was like it hurts so bad (laughs) oh my god it's just like had I not taken the tiny cater cater of ranch I could have avoided this whole head injury but no I had to have the ranch you're just trying to live your life just trying to have some ranch and some pleasure and Kenzie's getting in the way the car's getting in the way like fuck come on that was all on Thursday too so I got two head injuries in the space of like five hours oh my god I'd say take it easy but I don't know where you would because you keep there's no safe space (laughs) like that's ridiculous how would that ever happen I am not a take it easy person come on (laughs) Well, that too, for sure. So maybe I'll just light my joint. What are you smoking? So this is a CBD heavy because it's 5% CBD. That's, pre-roll. that's pretty heavy for what you usually find. I didn't, I didn't realize what I was buying because I've gotten this Humboldt Farms brand before, but I didn't realize this is the CBD one, which is fine because I've been kind of curious to try some stuff that's a little bit more balanced. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be like a cross. So like the plant is actually a cross or if they're just two types of cannabis in here. Harley Sue either cross with or mixed with orange creamsicle. 
And so we have a THC level of 9.83% and the CBD level is 5.59%. Something, something a little more balanced. And it does seem to be better. Uh, I, this is the second one I've smoked out of the pack of four. The anxiety that I sometimes get when I smoke other things that are high THC does not seem to be as bad. So I kind of liking this. It's, it's nice. Cause it does still get you a little bit of a like fun, woo, but without being too over the top. How are you? And what are you smoking today, Becca? <laughs> I'm good. I'm actually smoking in my living room and Ooh. it's been what the entire time we've been recording. I haven't been able to smoke in the fucking place where we're recording. Big yes. news. I've moved. There were a lot of reasons that other place was was not working out and we had wanted to move our timeline got rushed a little bit because of that stupid fucking warning about smelling cannabis outside our door there were so many things that went wrong with that apartment and we were like oh really we're the problem because you can smell a little bit of weed outside our door oh yeah okay got it yeah lots of privilege in that totally recognize that that we were able to leave and Luckily, we've landed in Las Vegas, which is where I grew up and literally have a 24 hour dispensary <laughs> four miles away. So, yay! Yay! So, so I'm exciting. smoking right now as we're recording live. It's going to be so fun. It's going to be kind of a game changer for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gretchen and I would have to take breaks and I'd run into the bathroom or the bedroom, smoke real quick, and then run back to recording. So this is totally different. But I grabbed this pen and ironically, it's called LV Confidential. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, well, nice. that's perfect. So it's an indica. It's not making me too sleepy, but it is making me feel really relaxed. And I don't, again, I, we need to do a whole can of quest about how percentages work and how labels vary in terms of how to read oh. what the THC percentage is and what that means either percent to total or what it means in I a pen it. versus a flower. Oh, it's very God. confusing to me. Anyway, this pen is 89.7% THC, which that's total of volume. The pen, yes, right. That's total right. volume. But like, okay, volume is helpful, but I'm not sure that helps me really understand what that's going to do to me. But, you know, whatever. oh boy. I mean, we could, yeah, dive right down a giant old rabbit hole right now on that. But no, we'll we'll save that. We'll do some research and and maybe look a into quest. that. This is going to be a quest. We haven't picked our next quest. This also has CBG, which I know we've mentioned, but I still don't have a super grasp of what that does or means. Um, and then terping wise, it's got some myrcene, caryophylline, and lemonine. So I'm l- back to being able to understand what the terpenes are in my shit and talking about it. And I'm so excited. And then I'm super excited because we're making pot pie today. Yay. And this is a high, I believe this is a high gluttony first. We are yeah. actually making something Becca has made before and I have not. So er, what? Yeah. I know. I We're all shocked. We are all shocked. It's true. <laughs> and two, two things about this though, that you introduced me to, because also you're introducing me to this vinegar and pie crust concept. I don't know how I did not know about this at all. Like I'm having so much fun introducing you to these things because I am saying them to you totally under the assumption that it's something that you've just like had under your belt and you totally know about it. And so it's really fun for me because I've read this recipe with vinegar in it. I had no understanding of why that was a big deal or not. And so with you saying this is a surprise makes me really excited to understand more about it, how it's going to work, because once you once Gretchen has come across something she doesn't understand the next time I talk to her she understands it so I knew once I mentioned it and you didn't know about it you would have like we'd be talking about it today (laughs) well for sure because I did the now I had heard of putting vodka or alcohol into pie crust and I think it's probably it's essentially the same principle they talk a lot about in the, the articles I read I mean, should we just get into this now? 
Well, let me say real quick what recipes we're basing okay. our stuff off loosely, okay. and then we can jump into why it's cool and okay. then the steps. I'll, I'll contain my excitement. Anyway, I have a bunch of shit to tell you. <laughs> we're I'll so stop. excited. So we are loosely basing today off of two recipes, but Gretchen's going pretty rogue. We're doing, she's going real hell or good with it. And I'm switching mine up a little bit with mushrooms instead of chicken. but. We're using America's Test Kitchen for the filling and then the New York Times for the crust. And because those are those are both behind paywalls, I actually haven't been able to see them. Only Gretchen has. We're going to put our version on the website. We will link these, of course, but we're kind of doing our own thing. And a lot of pot pie recipes are the same. So yeah. <laughs> these are just two we found that looks good and interesting. And then we're going to just run with it in our own ways too. Yeah. Cause Gretchen subscribes to a lot of the culinary things. She likes that stuff. Uh, and I like- go, Oh, I can't read that. <laughs> Can you tell me what it says? <laughs> what do you mean? You can't, you, you could physically read them, well, right? Like okay. you could read them. It's just a question. I'm unable of, to view it. How's that? Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. I was like, <laughs> I thought you were talking about understanding. Okay, that joint oh. is hitting me real nice, real fast. All right. Yeah. But it is a nice perky kind of like fun. I'm like, I'm such a lightweight because this is fucking me up. The but joint. Like, yeah. But <laughs> like, I just spoke a little two hits off it. I'm like, I am great. Hello. <laughs> I am amazing. Well, I don't think we've, I mean, we're saying what we've smoked and you're obviously very much enjoying it, but I don't think we've said what we're drinking. And I see your cute little glass there. So I wanted to mention it. Your little, what's that? A sniffer glass? Or I think think it's technically a snifter. Yes. Cause I like a tiny little glass of wine. (laughs) I'm having a tiny little glass of Fino Sherry from uh, Lestau. So that because we are using, I am using, sorry, not we, because you don't have any sherry right now. Sorry, Becca, that I forgot <laughs> to put that on the ingredients list. Okay, so, so I, you're enjoying that because mm-hmm. we're already using it anyway. Mm-hmm. And it looks like a fun peachy ginger color. That's not what it tastes like, but yeah. <laughs> it's Fino. It, it's Fino <laughs> sherry. So it's a it's an acquired taste. Like sherry is not for everyone. What does um, Fino mean? So the, the, the Fino is the drier cherries. They're I know typically the most dry. They're the high end of the spectrum. I see. And then, I know Fino balsamic is a kind of specific type, right? I don't know about that. Mm. I don't, I'll have to look into how balsamic is graded or something. We'll see. I could be making it up too, but we're not here to talk about balsamic. <laughs> we are talking or sherry. about, or sherry. We're just enjoying it. Gretchen's enjoying it. I'm drinking some Pinot Noir. It's a 2017 Po. It's very nice. Great. So while we're sipping on that, do you want to talk us through what are we talking about with world levels for this over uh, for all of the components? So since we are making our own dough, because we can't not do that, I'm <laughs> making Becca do it every time. <laughs> it's a it's a world level four, just because pie dough can be a little bit persnickety. You do not want to work it too much that increases the difficulty level is having it go going with making your own versus store bought. So world level four, four, unless you are buying pre-made pie crust. Then I think it's a world level two and there's really good pie dough out there. And because we're making a pot pie, there's only dough on the top. Correct. Which is yes. Information I was not aware of. Feels really bad to be a chef and be like, so I didn't know this about this American classic. I <laughs> know nothing about this. But if you wanted me to describe British pies, I'll be here all day. All over it. Yeah. <laughs> you know a lot about a lot. There are a few things you don't know. And that's like a nice turn of pace for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't it always when there's like somebody that knows something and you're like, oh, but I know, I knew a little thing. I knew like a little thing that you didn't know. I'm like, oh, oh I, oh, Gretchen, oh, oh, good job, Rebecca. <laughs> it can be very superior in that moment. The I think joy was, of a moment of superiority. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I only found out about putting cheese in pie dough like a couple of years ago because Kristen of Paul and Kristen fame 
makes oh her one of her specialties i believe is cheddar apple pie mm-hmm. with the cheddar cheese crust and i was like my bla- my brain exploded it just exploded <laughs> i had a friend in college who would say a hug without the squeeze is like apple pie without the cheese that's cute and that was the first time i had heard of a, a, I was like, what is that just like a saying? She was like, no, my family put cheese in our apple pie. And I was like, what are you you talking? All of this is new to me. What are you talking about? But it makes so much sense. Somebody's here. Oh, Kenzie. The troublemaker. The great interrupter. The great interrupter, indeed. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, kidding. You're funny. We've been mentioning it, but one of the cool things we're excited about is the use of vinegar in this pie crust dough. So Gretchen, what can you tell me about this? I did do a little preparation for this episode by going through the America's cookbook. It makes me feel closer to grandma when I use it. So this is essentially what I've come to realize is the, for the most part, the only cookbook my grandma might have used. When was it published? Copyright 1937, 1940, and 1943. Cool. Old book. Old book. I didn't really find like a chicken pot pie recipe, but I was intrigued by how this part of like how this cookbook is written is sort of like, here's how to make one thing and then get like three more meals out of it. So it's pretty interesting to read, but did not really have a true like chicken pot pie recipe. They had say like they have a pie pastry dough. They call it pastry dough. They don't call it pie dough. They call it pastry dough. But they weren't using vinegar. No vinegar. No, I didn't find any specific evolution of like the knowledge of using vinegar in the dough. I love adding vinegar to stuff. I love vinegar so much. Vodka thing seems pretty new to me, but I do see some reference that it it is like a handed down technique from before. So there's really two ways that vinegar itself could be helpful in this situation. Number one as an antioxidant. So it keeps the dough from like going gray as fast. If you don't use it within the first two days, you start to see some speckling. That's it growing various things. Ew. Or it's oxidizing. I got less in the nitty gritty about that than I usually do. So it prevents that (laughs) graying from happening as quickly. You're still going to get some, but but it does stay a much nicer color longer. You can still use dough at that point because you're going to bake it. And it's, you know, I, I mean... I wouldn't recommend it if it's like completely black. Don't don't be baking yeah. with black though. But <laughs> no, Ew. a little I'm gray is fine. Yeah, <laughs> try to use it within two days. <laughs> yeah, two days is a good window. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then the second one is has more has to do with the gluten in that gluten can only develop when water is present. So anytime you're adding something that is not a hundred percent water to your dough that means there's less likelihood of that gluten developing. So vodka is typically 40% ethanol. If you have 80 proof vodka, 40% ethanol and 60% water, you're only getting that 60% that's reacting with your flour and creating gluten. Whereas with ethanol, the gluten can't develop. Okay. There's science to back that up. So I think that the vinegar is related because it's the same principle. It's just had that ethanol converted into an acid. Now it's typically not as potent. So I I think that the acidity offsets the water a little bit, but not to the extent that vodka would. That being said, I'm not really sure it's the same, that it is the same. I'm just saying that's my theory is that you're replacing part of that water with the vinegar. And that's, that's why it works. But I stress that the internet did not have a good answer for me. And usually at the very least, the internet can steer me in the right direction of a good answer. (laughs) (laughs) There doesn't seem to be a lot of scientific fact to that theory of that water replacement with the vinegar, like there is with the vodka. Does that make sense? Yes. I, what, yes, I, that makes sense that there's not as much to explain it. I'm wondering though, 
do you use alcohol instead of water because you don't want as much gluten development? Correct. Okay. And so then (laughs) using vinegar works in the same way that it supplies like a certain amount of water, but it's not a hundred percent water. So there's some amount of inhibition of the gluten buildup that's still happening with the vinegar correct that but that's just my theory okay i'm i'm i that's p- part of the point i'm trying to make is that I don't have, okay i don't have solid facts to back that up because most of the articles i came across were like it has it does something to inhibit the <laughs> gluten formation we've talked pretty extensively about the crust let's talk about our steps now We will start out with making that dough first, but Gretchen, can you talk us through the next couple of steps? Big picture, what are we going to be doing kind of start to finish today? Making our dough. We're going to let that dough rest for a while while we make the filling for our pot pie. We're both using cast iron skillets. Then we're going to roll the top out, put it back in the fridge for a few minutes while we finish adding the rest of the stuff to our filling. And then once we've added that, we're gonna put the dough on top and make it pretty and put it in the oven and bake for 10 minutes. Let's get started on our dough then. I will read the ingredients. Okay. And then and then Gretchen will talk us through first steps and what we've actually already done for this crust. Ingredients, two and a half cups, 320 grams of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon or 10 grams of sugar, one teaspoon baking powder, one teaspoon fine sea salt, one half cup or 120 milliliters ice water, one tablespoon vinegar. Gretchen's using cherry, as she said, I'm using apple cider. One cup or 225 grams of cold unsalted butter, which is two sticks. And those are going to need to be cut into one inch cubes. Gretchen and I have both already said ours are definitely not one inch cubes. Yeah, no, mine are probably smaller, but that's just because I'm lazy and I don't like to be that exact. (laughs) And you have mentioned that we'll be using cast iron skillets. Is there any other special equipment that we'll need today? Rolling pin is helpful. And I will mention a pastry cutter or a pastry blender. If you do not have one of those, a fork works pretty well. A lot of people don't don't need a pastry blender. I have one, but I went to culinary school and I bought all the things. To start with, we are going to whisk together our flour, sugar, and baking powder Oops, sorry, flour, sugar, baking powder, and salt, and set aside. I've put mine in the fridge because when making pastry dough, having things as cold as possible helps. Not necessary, but sometimes it's a good thing. In a measuring cup or small bowl, combine the water and vinegar, set aside. Gently toss the butter in the flour mixture until coated. Then use a pastry blender or pastry cutter or a fork. (laughs) Cut the butter into the flour. You should end up with sandy patches up to pea-sized chunks or larger bits as well is what they wrote. Like, so really just an assortment of sizes of butter. You want (laughs) anything, whatever you feel like. It's just got to be more than just tossing the butter in. And I've had my butter in the refrigerator. Oh, perfect. Yes. Everything in the refrigerator. I accidentally used salted butter today. Me too. I didn't, I wasn't sure if I was going to tell you. (laughs) Well, isn't it convenient when we make the same mistakes? (laughs) (laughs) Thinking maybe I don't need to add any more salt to the rest of this probably then. Good point. Sorry, I had to eat some of the duck. (laughs) That makes sense. It's too good. We'll share the full ingredients of the filling that we're each doing later, but mine's pretty straightforward. I'm just kind of swapping mushrooms for chicken. But we haven't said yet what Gretchen's making for her filling. Maybe when we're rolling our dough out or not rolling Mm -hmm. out, but kind of kneading, you can talk us through what fun things you have in store. I can and I will. All right. We're adding our butter. I'm putting my butter in. All of it at once. Yep. All of it at once. 
And I'm breaking my butter up a little bit. Right now we're kind of like mashing a little the butter. Sort of, yeah. I'm making a mess, but yeah, kind of just pushing down into it. You can do this with your hands, but since it will make the butter warm up significantly, it's not the best plan. Got it. So I've definitely just rubbed butter into flour before and it worked. It did work fine. Now I'm like, oh, this is annoyingly hard. Yeah, I'm like, um, <laughs> mine's not even close to like patchy. Fuck it. I'm just going to put my hands in there because you know, I, I know there's only so much, so much patience we have. I'm sorry. This is just faster. You can re- reduce your risk of warming a butter up if you dip your hands in ice water for a while before you do it too. That's true. I was wondering too, if you put this, like if you did like an ice bath, like a bigger ice bowl around underneath this. it. It would help keep it cold for sure. So then I mean, you used your hands. I don't think you'd want to do like a full ice bath, ice bath, because that might be too cold. Uh huh. But if you just like put it on top of a bowl of ice, maybe that and then would work be... it with your hands. Yeah. Much easier. Plus, you can kind of press it into flakes already. Sure. Is yours still really loose, or what does yes. it look like? Yes. Still pretty loose. And then there's there's sandy parts and then some of those pea-sized chunks Chunks. as well. Okay. Yeah. But I think that's as far as I'm going to take it. Is there a size that's too big that you want to get down? Like if it's over? (laughs) Yeah. If it's over a quarter, I'd I'd try and break it up a little bit more. Now I am going to add my water. Half of it? Yes. Half of the water. And that's the ice water and vinegar vinegar mixture. Yeah. Okay, so and I am I'm being a very bad little chef and not even using a fork, but I'm gonna stir this with my hand. <laughs> okay. Gretchen has she's off book completely already. Completely off book already. This is Gretchen's chef bucket. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> chef time where Gretchen says, Yeah, no, I can't can't be bothered. Plus, I'm sure mashing is not the easiest thing for your hands. It does hurt, yes. I think that's yeah. part of it is why I do so much stuff with my hands is because usually whatever I'm manipulating is a lot softer than holding on to the handle of the thing that yeah. I'm trying to manipulate it with. And it's faster. So I, mine's probably wet enough because I can make a bowl, kind of a ball with the dough. Okay, so. so I need to add more. Mine's really dry still. So yeah, I think I'm I'm good. Okay. Let's see how salty it is. It's fine. <laughs> okay. I do like that vinegar hit though. That's Yay. good. Oh, I love that. So now I'm going down onto the counter. And I'm, I'm sorry, wait, what texture am I looking for before you, I take it out and put it on it's, the counter? It's shaggy. Like mine's just pretty loose pile. No loose flour? Or... No loose flour. Yeah. The flour should either be kind of held up with the, what's what I'm looking for? The butter. Sorry. Uh-huh. <laughs> held up together with the butter because the water is just sort of in in the middle in the, just in the mix it hasn't fully done its job yet okay so we start de- right. developing the glue all right then i'll take it out of the bowl pop it onto my cutting board here and now we're going to get into this interesting kneading technique that they recommended okay yeah what are next steps so we are going to knead this together using a pushing motion to push small amounts of the flour outward kind of flake in the make flakes from the butter Okay. So I'm going to try this. It's kind of like a bulldozer motion with a press at the end, I think. It's like, okay, so you've got your pile of flour kind of, mixture out and it's yeah. kind of in like a slope driveway yeah, <laughs> sort of shape. And then you're kind of coming along and, and not starting necessarily at the very top, but like three quarters of the way in and kind of pushing towards the bottom, the lower end. Of the the slope. Slope. Yeah, if it's sloping okay. away from you. I see. I think this is how it's supposed to go. Okay. That's how using, I read it. <laughs> and we're using the heel of our hand. Yeah. I'm kind of starting to see a dough come together here. I'm going to push this a little bit more. There's still some sandy stuff. And it's still pretty flaky. So once you've pushed it out, you bring it back together into a pile. Mm-hmm. This is the, the impression I'm get, I got. I wasn't sure how this technique would work out, but it seems to be like I'm getting about an eight of the, the total of the dough with my hands each time. So I'm getting about eight pushes before it's like kind of pushed into a pile away from me. I see. And then it says, but use the bench scraper to bring it back together. I think mine, I might've put a little too much water in mine. I think yeah. I did too. Mine's really soft and like squishy. It, but kind of a dough though. Oh, and this last time I'm getting bigger chunks. You, I Seeing more of the dough forming. It's hard to see. Can I show you mine? I don't want to go too far. Yeah. Oh yeah. Stop. 
You're good. Okay. okay. I'm also okay. kneading it on my cutting board and I chopped my herbs on here. So the dough I did too. Tastes, the dough yeah. tastes pretty good. There's also a little bit of onion. Nice. That's a high gluttony hint. Hacks. Oh, hint. Hacks. I like hint. You like hint? I like both. Getting my plastic wrap out here. Oh. It tastes really good. I know. I keep <laughs> eating it. <laughs> Me too. I can't stop. I'm hungry. We are dough eaters in my family. My at least me and my mom are. Mm-hmm. We love dough. It's a problem. <laughs> one disc in the fridge. Ditto that. One disc in the fridge. The next one's slightly smaller. Been eating it. Yeah. The size keeps dropping. I don't think you've told us yet what's in your pot pie. Well, we haven't really gone through. Did we we went through the ingredients for the pie yet? Mm-hmm. The interior. Okay. Mm-mm. I'll read those. Pie filling, four carrots, two celery ribs, four tablespoons of unsalted butter, one onion, salt and pepper, one teaspoon fresh thyme or one quarter teaspoon dried thyme, six tablespoons of all-purpose flour, two cups of broth, one and a half pounds of meat. I'm using mushrooms. Gretchen will fill us in, but she's using duck. Half a cup of frozen peas, quarter cup of heavy cream, one tablespoon sherry or wine, three tablespoons fresh parsley. I'm not using that. (laughs) And real quick, the carrots are supposed to be peeled and sliced, cut into half an inch. The celery is cut into quarter inch pieces. I'm sorry, carrots cut into quarter inch too. And the onion is finely chopped. The parsley is minced. The thyme is minced. Also minced. Yep. Okay. I think that covers the recipe. As far as what the recipe is telling us to do. Right. You are pretty much just swapping out your chicken for mushrooms. And I am being fancy today. <laughs> Super fancy. Super fancy. And I am going to make a duck confit with root vegetables and cranberry filling for my pot pie. Yeah. It's a little extra. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. And your chicken, I'm sorry, your duck is already prepared. Yes. So I sous vide some duck legs to make duck confit. My mushrooms are already cooked down. So do you think you covered the all, the ingredients that you're doing? Yes. Yes. I believe I did. Okay. So then we need steps. We're going to start by warming up our cast iron pan. This recipe said for three minutes specifically. <laughs> like for three okay. minutes. At what temperature? Medium. You're going to heat your cast iron pan over medium heat for three minutes. Then you're going to add the four tablespoons of butter and let that melt a little bit. And then we're adding the, all the vegetables. So we're adding carrot, celery, and onion, quarter teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and cook until softened and lightly browned five to seven minutes. Then we're going to stir in the thyme and wait until that smells good. Then we're going to add the flour and cook for two minutes. So we're making a, a roux on our vegetables with the butter and flour combo there. Then we're going to add our broth and scrape the bottom of the pan and then allow to simmer for a few minutes until the sauce is thickened. And then we're going to turn that off. We're going to work on our top dough. And once we've got our top dough rolled out and ready to roll, we're going to put that back in the fridge and finish our our filling. Then we're going to top it with the pastry and put it in the oven to bake. Okay. So I will turn my oven on to 400 and I will turn my pan my temperature to low to warm up for three minutes sure i have a gas stove now yay so i know exciting so now i have to get used to this but so bear with me but um it'll be interesting i'm sure you'll be fine i know <laughs> already i'm like oh my god this is amazing <laughs> <laughs> this is so much better yeah so much better what other root vegetables are you doing i'm using turnip and parsnip and rutabaga, which will make my mother shudder because she hates rutabaga. Uh, and carrot. She, could, she couldn't eat carrot. She does like carrot. She just couldn't eat carrot for a while. But you're putting carrot in yes, today. Yes, car- carrot is. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. And good to know about your mom. Lucky yeah. timing that I <laughs> said that. Some days I'm like, what, what, what do I do with me? Like, really? <laughs> What do I do with me? Age old question. Right. I want more of that dough. It's so I good. Know. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't go into it. Now that you've said that, I might. <laughs> I don't want to unwrap my. I know that's really the only thing stopping me right now is that plastic wrap. <laughs> Very thin barrier there. Yeah. <laughs> 
Not much of a barrier at all. <laughs> all right, my pan is definitely plenty warm. Here. Okay. So I'm gonna add my four tablespoons of butter. I am using salted, so I'll have to remember to taste things before I get excited about salt again. Good point. I've already cooked my other root vegetables, though, because I was a bit worried about volume. Although I did cut back significantly on the carrot, I only ended up using one. But it really didn't say what size of carrot. No, or onion. So I went with large on both. Okay. So I've got my veg in my butter now. Okay. My butter's still melting. I got to turn my heat up a bit. Well, I'm going to throw them in anyway. No one's stopping you. Break all the rules. No (laughs) rules. And the time now, or we wait on the time? Uh, We wait. We wait until the the veg is cooked up a bit. So we've got like a five minutes before we, uh, at least before we uh, add our time. And salt and pepper, correct? And salt and pepper. Yes. Okay, where is my salt and pepper? Here it is. Okay. And I'm gonna really just gonna add butter or pepper right now because of the salted butter. Yeah. Oh, I didn't measure out my peas or my heavy cream yet. Me neither. Although I'm debating on whether or not I actually want to do the peas. You have so much other stuff. Yeah. Finally, I'm getting some sizzle. Woo! Mine is sizzling away now. Have you seen pies with seven up? Sorry, what now? Pie crust or just pies? I don't know if it's pies or cakes. There's something with seven up and Coca-Cola. Sounds familiar, but I'm not clearly not super familiar. (laughs) Well, and I'm not being very specific. (laughs) Well, that, yeah, you're right. You're not. (laughs) Okay. Seven up cake. This one in particular here is a bunt cake. Butter, sugar, eggs, flour, lemon extract and seven up no baking powder or baking soda Mm-mm. that's your leavener then it's the carbon dioxide the bubbles mm-hmm. well Fine. and flavoring but sure <laughs> oh my veggies are translucent okay i'm just kind of waiting to get a there's a little bit of browning starting to happen but not a lot is your pan pretty crowded yes okay same i feel like the carrots are like not cooked at all but that's okay because you're really just getting them started at this point. You wouldn't want them to be fully cooked since you're putting it in the oven to cook further. Uh-huh. And and it's I mean and you're not taking them out of the pan at this point. That's true. They'll they'll keep cooking. Yes, they will keep cooking. So I don't need to fret about my carrots. No, I would not. Okay. Although my butter's still not even all the way melted. <laughs> I think you need to turn your heat up a little. I guess so. I'm adding in my some of my other root veggies over here. I also gotta have to remember I have a 12 inch pan here. So I'm gonna add my flour. And that's uh, six tablespoons. <laughs> oh, now I remember there was something I was really excited to tell you about in regards to like something I feel like we should cook for the podcast. What? Well, it kind of depends on how you feel about pistachios. I love pistachios. Oh, then fuck yeah, we're making these. Okay. Pista- like pistachio buns, like a la style of a cinnamon bun, but with a pistachio filling and a pistachio Ooh. frosting. Yes, let's do it. That sounds and so good. We have to make a homemade pistachio paste to go in it. Oh my so, gosh. I love yes. it. I'm pretty excited. I don't know when we're going to make it. those, but <laughs> I think we have like a holiday treat on the oh. schedule. So, so that, that, yes, that. Yeah. <laughs> Done. Okay. Oh no, I forgot to add my thyme. Oops. I'm going to add my thyme now. So you did your flour, mixed I did it my in, flour. and yep. now you're adding your thyme. Which I think it'll be fine. It makes that big of a difference on stock. Wait, so sh- do I put the thyme in now then before I put my yes, flour before in? the flour. I see. I can't see any reason why it would really make that much of a difference. So all, all you're really trying to do is apply some heat to help release the aromatic. I am pretty much ready for my stock now and i had duck stock in my freezer nice some of that out and then this, there was liquid that came off of the duck legs here yeah, and that, that too. too nice i only found a, a cup of duck stock in the freezer <laughs> not quite enough <laughs> not quite enough <laughs> so it's supposed to be two cups did you whisk your flour i uh, just stirred just, it in just stirred because it in. the the veggies are going to help break up some of that it's just sticking a little. I had factored in the fact that part of doing the sous vide duck legs mm-hmm. would mean that all the, the like connective tissue in the duck breaks down. And so this is like super gelatinous. Oh, stuff that I've got here. 
I bet. So I could I could definitely add a little water and it would be okay. Because that stuff's going to be thick. I'm going to add some of this uh, sherry vinegar water I got from leftover from the pie dough. Okay. I've got my flour added. So now broth. Yep. Okay. You want to make sure. So you've got your veggies pretty well coated with your, your flour. I think so. It's sticking to the bottom a bit. Okay. Right. That's perfect then. Okay. And yeah, make sure when you add your, your stock that you scrape the bottom of the pan really well. Okay. So mine's looking really good. Definitely doesn't need any salt because I mean, I salted the duck already. Okay. That's really the, the bulk of what has to go in there at this point. Sure. I'm trying to scrape up these bits. Let me put a little like hot sauce in mine. Ooh, fun. It needs something. It needs something. I'm surprised there's not garlic. I'm not that surprised. No. The as far as like it. a, yeah, traditional sort of American thing. I feel like garlic is less of a factor. That's a good point. Whereas onions are very important. Sure. It's looking like pot pie filling. Yeah. I I think it's, uh, it's definitely working. Yeah. I'm going to turn my heat down a little bit. I am going to also add cranberries to this. Are they fresh or dry? They're the, they're the frozen kind because nice. I still have that bag from when we made pumpkin upside down cake. So I was like, oh, I'll just mm. use those. So I did cook Yum. those a little bit first just to break them down a little bit. Got it. Was that our this timer one. for? Nope. That's my oven. But we have 13 minutes left on the uh, dough in the fridge. Oh, let's just do it. Okay. Well, wait, am I done here? I just turn yeah, it just down turn now? it turn it down and let it kind of cool, chill out. Got my sheets of parchment paper here. You're putting parchment down under the dough? That'll make it easier to move around. We're huh? only doing a half, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And did you flour or just the parchment? Just the parchment. All right. Rolling out into a... This, around this. Around. So we want this top to go right inside the sidewall of the cast iron skillet, right? Yes. So it covers the it covers the filling, but it's not on top of the pan. Correct. Okay. I mean, if we were doing it the, the way that America's Test Kitchen recommends, we would be <laughs> car baking it. And yes, and the same basically. But so we we'd roll it out and then par bake it before we put it on. Correct. And even though we trust them, we just decided we didn't want to do that step. <laughs> we didn't want to do that work. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> who cares if your stuff cooks a little longer? But we'll see. There could be a real reason that they're like, yeah. nah, this is why you want to do it. We will find out, <laughs> and we will tell you all of it. <laughs> I'm going to have to like trim mine, I think, before it goes on or shape it a little. Yeah, see if I actually can get mine to (laughs) the right size. Like that pan is huge. (laughs) Are you doing like any designs or anything? Mm, Probably not. I mean, I'll probably just cut little things out of the top. Okay. We've got to put it in the fridge so it can sit for a few. Okay. So rewrap it? No, I just, I would just leave it between the two pieces of parchment. That's plenty okay. of protection for it for okay the amount of time it's going to be in the fridge. That it's only going to be in there a few minutes. Now to finish off the filling. Oh, looks mine, like mine's reduced a little bit. Gonna give it a stir here. I think I'm going to put a little porcini powder in mine. Mm. So it just needs like a sort of a savory bump. Oh, we talked about asafetida too. Oh, right. Where is that? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right? For real, where is that? I think you're right. It's a little bland without something. It needs, yeah, it needs something. So I just put a little asafetida in. We'll see what that does. Oh, I can't find mine. Okay. Porcini powder it is. Yeah. I do a little truffle too. Okay. I did a little salt and some asafetida. When do the peas go in? We're going to mix the, the meat, the peas my parsley and the heavy cream in. I mean, I think basically right before we top it. How much cream? A quarter of a cup. Thank you. Hardly any. Yeah, not enough. An insultingly small amount. (laughs) Going in with my cream, going in with my peas. Okay. And my duck. It's starting to get full over here. (laughs) So I'm putting my cream, my peas, and my mushrooms in. And I'm adding my... Tiny amount of sherry. I'm going to stir this together. I'm going to add my cranberries last since I'm hoping that will keep them from bleeding horribly throughout the whole thing. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to avoid having a pink sauce here. <laughs> this will be fun. Sauce. We'll see. We'll see how I can do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This definitely looks like a pot pie filling. Okay. You're taking yours out of the fridge? 
your dough in just a second because I haven't stirred in my cranberries yet. It's pretty. Mm-hmm. I put a little, another sprinkle of the black, black truffle salt over the top here. All right. Now I'm about to go get my dough. Did it stiffen up a little? Oh yeah. Pretty much a board right now. So <laughs> then I'm going to cut my holes. All right. Place on top. Yep. Trimming a bit here, but now I'm going, I'm going for going the, oven. the oven for 20. We're going to do 20, 25 minutes or so because of not par baking the top. Right. Yeah. All right. 20 minutes on the timer. And then that's all the gluttoners will have for now until we see them in the future or they hear us in the future. Time travel, time travel, time travel. We'll have really awkward singing song music for you coming up soon. I'm sure we will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oof. This is a whirlwind. Yeah. End there. And now we are in the future. Time traveling. I'm so curious about how yours came out, Gretchen, with the fresh cranberries and the duck and the root vegetables. What happened? How did it go? Um, it was a bit of a miss. I got to oh. say, I was worried with the combination of root vegetables that if I used a dried cranberry, which was sweetened, that it would make it too sweet. And unfortunately, in my wanting to avoid it being too sweet, I used the fresh frozen cranberries and they were bitter so it would just it ruined it <laughs> bummer bummer now i was able to salvage it because once you pick the cranberries out <laughs> for the most part it was great so it just <laughs> needed to not have any cranberry but i'll have to remember in the future that maybe a dried rehydrated cranberry might be the way to go and it it needed to be sweeter i was i went too far savory. I, I missed. I missed a little bit, mm. but I loved the, the dough and it did. It was fine once I picked the cranberries out. <laughs> <laughs> what were your thoughts on the top not being par baked? Oh, so I did actually do uh, a little experiment the next day and cool. par bake the top. I think I like the par baked top. It did. It made a little bit of a difference. It was crisp. It was a little crisper. It just, it was more, it was just a little more satisfying. And I feel like the, the one when we did it on top, it didn't quite bake as nicely. So, I mean, it was fine, solid leftovers, but I have to say I did like the pre-baking of the top. I hear you. That makes total sense. I was wishing, uh, first of all, mine was delicious. It came out great. The mix was great. And I was actually feeling like, I wish I'd scaled back a little bit of the, the carrot. Mm. It was like almost a little bit too sweet for me, but it was still really good. But I was wishing for that extra crunch. And I think we were both really tired. And if we had done it maybe on another day, we probably would have done that extra step, but it was really good for, for that day. It worked. It was so satisfying and just what I wanted. And then later I was thinking about it and kind of wishing that the top had been that same level of texture all, uh, all the way through. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. But I do love the, I think even the next time I make a pie dough, I add more vinegar than I did because I want, I want to taste that vinegar. I want, I want to take it to the extreme uh, high end Mm -hmm. and see how that tastes then work back from there. I think, I mean, I won't use a hundred percent vinegar, but maybe half and half, <laughs> half water, half vinegar next time. Fun. Yeah. Awesome. So a learning for sure. Delicious still as always. And we will share the final thoughts on the website, highgluttony.com. And there will be pictures and maybe, maybe some video. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> That'll go up on the Facebook, Facebook and Instagram at some point. Uh, like share subscribe and thanks for joining us uh, what do we say off we go <laughs> off we go <laughs> it's like oh my god my brain my brain lost that thing that we say all the time <laughs> off we go <laughs> i'm being judged by a rabbit right now aria is giving me quite the look judgy little bunny <laughs> <laughs>